Hello, hello, everyone. This is Mike. I'm the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. Today, I want to walk you through a process, an onboarding process that we built using Sweet Dash for our official reseller program. And it's pretty great. And I think it's worth sharing with you guys so you can understand how you can use these many, many concepts together to automate an onboarding process in the sense that you can automatically start someone in the process, collect data, get signatures, update them on where they are, and present a very nice process step by step by step and dramatically reduce the number of manual interactions that you or your team will need to execute in order to make this happen. Okay, so let's just start from the website. I'm going to be very informal in this video. I'm not going to script it out. I'm not going to do too much planning here. We're just going to go through this together. Okay, so here we are at the Sweet Dash website. If you go to the Partners menu and just roll down to the Reseller Program, our Reseller Program has been around for quite a while. It's a real game changer, and so recently we put a lot of work into an initiative to make sure that everyone out there knows what it is, how it works, etc. So what you'll see if you scroll down, and I'm not going to go over the reseller program, but just show you how this works. If you click apply, now it opens in a new tab to this address, secure.sweetdash.com backslash reseller virtual orientation. And you know what this is? It's a kickoff form. It's a kickoff form configured as a landing page using what we call a friendly URL here. And this is built in Sweet Dash. What you're seeing here is a Sweet Dash account just like the one you use, except this is the one that we use for a wide variety of interactions with our customers and with our partners. We call this Sweet Dash HQ, and we build right on top of the same thing that we build for you. So what you're seeing here is an HTML content block, content block, content block with a video embedded, etc. And now here's your form. Okay, so this is the kickoff form. When this is filled out, you click continue, you see a success, and then that kicks off all the processes that start the workflow to go through the process of becoming a reseller partner. And from the admin side, we've taken all the steps that can be automated and we've automated them and all the steps that need a manual interaction, we've created action templates that when that manual interaction is made, it's a single action that triggers multiple other actions, and therefore we're streamlining that process. So you'll see along the way in this process, there are two manual stops that need an actual person to look, review, and make a decision. But when that decision is made, it's just a single action to trigger an actions template, which then kicks everything back into automation mode and everything starts to happen again until the next stop and then the final one is just approval and the reseller prospect is moved all the way to what we call an official reseller partner okay so I know you want to see this work but let's start looking at the admin side first okay so since we said this was a kickoff form let's start by looking at the kickoff form on the admin side And now we find ourselves inside what we call Sweet Dash HQ, which is just a stock vanilla Sweet Dash account, just like you're using, that we are leveraging to handle the reseller program onboarding. So what we're doing here with this kickoff form is not really that complicated. It's pretty low key. It's much less complicated than what many of you are doing, but some of you have questions and you want to see real world application of these things. And so here we go, okay? So again, this is a kickoff form. This is intended to kick off a new process or bring people into your CRM typically, or it also can be used to onboard existing customers into a new process or a new workflow or funnel or something like that. What you're seeing here is these are HTML steps here. A logo is here, SVG background. These are uh, just HTML content steps. Some of them have CSS classes and are used and we're using CSS there. And then down here, we have the standard default fields, first name, last name, company name, title, etc., etc. Okay, so remember, this is what it looks like on the customer side here. Or here, excuse me, there. And on this side, this is the form. Okay, so now let's scroll down. And so we have this thing programmed with the assignments and automations. We're going to bring these people in as a prospect role. That's not so important in this flow, but something just to note. The coordinator is going to be Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, circles. Okay, so we're using two circles in this step. 
and they each have a function. This one is only here to allow us to set the start page, okay? And this circle won't change throughout the entire process, and that means every time someone logs in that's going through this process, they will be redirected to the start page, the same page, because they'll always have this circle. This circle is being used to indicate the step that they are currently on. And this circle will change, you'll see, as we go through the steps, they'll be removed from this circle and added to a step two circle, step three circle, etc. And you'll see how that works. And then down here, we're just adding them to an email marketing audience so that we can send campaigns and drip sequences to them. And then here's the key, an onboarding flow. So we're going to bring them directly into what's called an onboarding flow, which means as soon as they enter the portal by setting their password, they'll be redirected to this onboarding flow and locked to that flow until they complete it. So this way we know that if they come into the portal further, if they reach the start page, we know that they've already completed all the data or all the steps in the onboarding flow. And then here we're just going to add some tags. This will help us in our CRM list to understand what was the source of this user, where did they come from, and in this case they came from the Sweet Dash website and through the reseller workflow, the reseller funnel. Okay, We're going to send an email to the coordinator, which is Caitlin. She'll get an email to let her know that someone has entered and started the process, has completed this first step, um, or is entering the first step. And then we'll also send the portal access invitation immediately to the target, who would be the person who completes the form. All right, and we don't have that much application for known targets at this point because we don't have many customers in this account already. And then we have an additional email notification sending to me to let me know that there's a reseller process started just to feel the heartbeat. I'm not actually involved in this process. But it's nice for me to understand, okay, hey, we had like 10 people start today. That's great. I like to keep a mental count of how things are going. Is it more than yesterday, less than yesterday? Where are we? And it's just an informal gauge of how the reseller program is developing. All right, and that's it. Okay, and let's go to the link embed, and we'll show the link embed side of it. Okay, so here's the direct link. If I wanted to go to this form by a direct link, I can do that. But what we've used down here, as you saw, is a friendly URL. I've created it right here. And this is the URL that anyone can go to and see this form. If you'll scroll down, you'll see some of the customizations that have been made. Here's the customization we're using actually placeholders in this confirmation message. So it'll say, nice job, Mike, you're on your way. Check your email, it was sent to, your email is inserted here, so everything feels very custom from the beginning. We have uh, used all these settings here to make the form about as naked as it can be, and then used custom CSS to implement some of the nicer um, visual sides of this form as you see it in kind of a landing page format. Not just Not just a form, this can be built out in really like a landing page. And then when they complete this form, it kicks off that process. So let's go ahead now and we'll just sit on the customer side for a little bit and we'll complete this form and see what comes next and follow the steps from the customer side for a minute and see what it looks like. Okay, so the trusty random name generator has given us Calvin Barras and we're gonna go ahead and submit with this information. Let's continue to the next step. Okay, nice job Calvin, you're on your way. And then here the email is already filled in, so you can use these placeholders in real time to give a customized success message. And now we're going to grab the email. All right, here's the email that was sent to Calvin. See, it was sent to this email address here. But also notice, here's the email that was sent to admin plus corporate at Sweet Dash. This lets me know that Calvin has started. This is basically going to the admin side. And this is the one sent to the target who filled out the form. All right, and we're going to take this link. And since I'm in the same browser that I was actually starting to show you this in, it's important that I'm going to right-click and copy this link address. And then I'm going to go into an incognito browser. 
or I'm going to make sure that I'm in a different browser than my admin login. Okay, wherever I'm logged in as an admin, I need to be in a different browser. Okay, in this case, I'm back in this incognito window, the same place that I triggered the form. I'm going to just paste in this link. It's going to redirect. And here's the next step. Okay, so here Calvin has shown interest in the reseller program. He's received a welcome email. He says, okay, now I'm going to enter into Sweet Dash HQ. Let's set a password. Okay, that's done. And now let's save password and log in. Okay, now remember we set up a onboarding flow. So the very next thing he should see after logging in and setting his password is the onboarding flow. And here we are. Here's the onboarding flow. Welcome, Calvin. Thanks for your interest. Here's some information about the reseller program. Here are the steps in the flow. And now let's go to the flow admin. Let's look at this flow from the admin side and see what it looks like. And then we'll return to this side and work through the flow and you'll understand how this is put together. All right, so we're now back on the admin side, but before we get to that onboarding flow, I want to take you on a little tour of the circles as they exist and explain how they were used. So we saw that in the kickoff form we were assigning to the reseller start page which we said sets the start page for reseller onboarding and that would not change through the entire process. We also assigned reseller step one which says it's a reseller prospect that completes the kickoff form but has not completed the onboarding flow. Okay. Then we have a step two, and this is the manual action. They're waiting for a flow review. This is where a member of our staff reviews the data that's submitted in the flow and says, okay, that meets our requirements. Then they use an action template to trigger the next steps. That moves them to step three circle. And this is where the ball is in their court where they need to sign the reseller agreement. And when they do that, we use no code automation and move them from step three to step four. And then they're awaiting a manual activation process where we activate them as a reseller in the platform and another manual triggering of an action template, which then moves them to reseller step five. And they are what we call an official reseller partner. OK, but realize that I can look at these steps and see at any one time how many people are waiting for manual action. See, there's only one person sitting and waiting for a review here. That's good. I can go in and review their submission and then manually get them to the next step and there's one more person waiting down here. So I can see these are usually low numbers because that means the staff has taken care of the daily process that keeps everything moving. This I expect to be a high number because people will be kicking the tires, filling out the form, they're not really serious, they don't continue, they don't complete the flow. So we'll always have a high number here and these are people, if the ball is in their court, they're never going to complete. This will just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. But when they complete the flow, they move to step two, which triggers a staff action. After that, they move to step three, which is them, the ball in their court, signing the reseller agreement. This is also where you would expect to see a little friction. They just don't complete. They just aren't serious. They don't want to take the next step or they just forget or or there's 13 out there that are just waiting for them to get to their email and do everything that needs to be done. Then they enter this manual action and then they complete to reseller step five. And this has only been live for, say, a couple weeks. So, you know, these numbers are going to continue to grow. And while the reseller program has been in existence for a very long time, this, this version of the onboarding process is relatively new. So these numbers will continue to grow into the hundreds in a very short amount of time. In the early stages of the reseller program, there was not as much traffic. But because the traffic has grown and grown, it was worth it to us to take the time and completely automate this entire process as much as possible and now this is saving us a lot a lot a lot of time and manual actions in reducing the workload on the staff so you see here how the circles are used to move them through the process and tell us who is at what stage of the process and even to get an overview of where people are in the process where are the sticky points where are people waiting etc okay let's move on and look at the onboarding flow and look how that is built Okay, here we are in the onboarding flow. Uh, I'm not gonna go through an entire flow tutorial, but I'm quickly gonna fly through this. 
essentially what we have here is an introduction to reseller this is a content step it's what we call a content step and you can see the steps that are available to you if you click add new flow step so we have a read me sign content embed file upload file download or form okay but that first one is a content step where we introduce you'll see that it's right here reseller onboarding process and here's the content step okay let's go to step two step two is a form okay select form to embed this is an update form because now remember this person has already entered our platform they've set their password and that's why update forms only can be used in flows even if it's an onboarding flow so this is step two in the flow and we'll go through the flow here in just a second step three is a proof of identity here's where we ask them to upload a ID card and we explain here you can show content above the file upload to explain what is needed in the file upload you'll see that in a second and then here on step four is a read and e-sign and this is essentially where we show some legal language and we get a sign off on that legal language and you'll see that here in a second okay now on each one of these steps except for the last one you're able to use the no code automations to trigger after each one of these steps we don't do that in this flow on these steps we just save all of our actions for the end of the flow and you'll see here at the end we send an email to internals it sends us a notification that someone has just completed the onboarding flow and we get the name of the person and then we change their circle we remove them from reseller step one and we add them to reseller step two okay but remember they still have the reseller start page circle we didn't remove that we left that because that helps us control where they are redirected to when they log in which is a reseller onboarding dashboard which you'll see next reseller one step one is removed reseller step two is now added when they complete the flow okay keep that in mind so now we've uh, shown you the flow from the admin side let's go through the flow and one more thing to show, if you look in settings, you'll see that we have a redirect after completion. And we're using what we call here a dynamic placeholder link. And this one is your dash start dash page. And what this does is redirects them to their assigned start page. No matter what it is, no matter who is logged in, after they complete this onboarding flow, it will redirect them to their assigned start page, which we know what that will be in this flow because we are designing it but this is also useful in many cases you can redirect someone to their assigned start page without naming it in particular so it's dynamic based on who is logged in okay but notice that after this flow is completed we're redirecting them to their start page okay so let's now go back to the reseller side and complete the flow all right, all right, we're back on the reseller side. We're Calvin again, okay? So we're interested in becoming a reseller. We have set our password. We are in the onboarding flow, and we're reading about what we can expect, what's going to happen, and that's all agreeable. And we read, if you're ready, click continue. We're ready, let's continue. So let's click continue. We'll move to the next step. Okay, so now we have the form. This asks all the questions that we need to get answers for from reseller prospects I'm gonna go ahead and complete this okay this data is just of course dummy data let's scroll down and then we'll just click continue in the form this is just to demonstrate the process okay that form data is being submitted and added to the record this is the file upload step I'm just gonna drop a file in here a fake driver's license I'm gonna upload that that gets uploaded and filed in this user's submission and then now we are at this place okay so remember we're just gonna put in Calvin Barris and we click next and now we're just gonna click confirm now remember when I click confirm this is gonna complete the flow trigger the actions to change my circle send a notification to the admin and also redirect me to the start page and now I'm going to be redirected to the start page. See your start page there? That's the placeholder link. 
It's going to find the correct start page based on the configuration, and now I've been redirected, and I am here in the official reseller program onboarding. Okay, here's my company name, here's my name. I'm under evaluation. I have this notice that's telling me all the information about what I should be expecting. I have no menu. I only see reseller dashboard or reseller onboarding, excuse me. And this is my complete experience as a reseller prospect in step one or having completed step one. Okay, so now I've completed step one. I am holding in that manual hold, waiting for the Sweet Dash staff to evaluate the data that I just submitted in the onboarding flow. Uh, so let's now go look, let's switch back to Sweet Dash admin side and say, okay, now Calvin has submitted this. It needs manual evaluation because we need to look at the data that was submitted. We need to look at the ID card that was uploaded and be sure that that looks valid and make sure we know who we're doing business with. And when we are satisfied that the requirements have been met, we can move Calvin to step two. And I'll show you how that happened. And the way I'm going to show you how that happens is I'm going to introduce you to this start page, this dashboard that we've created for this particular onboarding. Okay? So keep in mind, we have these steps. We have this, this card that tells me my, my status. We have this notice, reseller step two, tells me all about it. So let's now take a look on the admin side and see how this is put together. Okay, here we go. We're gonna pull together a lot of concepts here. Looking at this page, this is a portal page. You can access this from pages, portal pages, and you can create a new page. You'll be in the same interface. You'll see that this portal page is assigned to the reseller start page circle. Now remember, that's the circle that we added that we intended to use to redirect them to this page and this will act as their start page and you'll see here if I go to assign start page there it is this page is assigned as the start page for this circle which means anyone in this circle will be redirected to this page immediately after login and therefore this acts as their pseudo dashboard so that's good that's all understood if we scroll down we see the dynamic menu is configured with a menu group and a title, which is not such a big deal because we are hiding this page in the dynamic pages menu. It's still required in case this somehow is unchecked. We need to have these data points in the database, but not really nothing complicated here. This is just a way to organize and categorize the pages into categories and then also have a page title and a menu title if needed. But again, this one is hidden and you'll remember that on the reseller side, there's only one menu item in the menu. But now you see that we've hidden this page. So you might be wondering what's happening there. We'll get to that. Don't worry. Okay. All right. And now let's scroll down and see how this is looking. And here's the kind of the big reveal for some of you. You're looking at this going, what is that? Okay. That's okay. Don't get overwhelmed. All right. So. This is designed in a way that we're using one dashboard and we modify the dashboard. We modify this content that you're seeing here and all the way down through here. We modify it based on the circle affiliation. And when I say modify, it's not modified. We're just showing and hiding specific elements in this content based on circle affiliation. And just to quickly illuminate, if you see here, step one, step two, step three, if I go in this row and I edit the row, I have this tab that's called Access Options, and I see that this row will show only for people with the circle reseller step three. And guess what? Each one of these rows has a circle affiliation in the same way so that no one will see all five of these rows. No one will see more than one of these rows they will only see the row that is appropriate to their circle. Same thing here. We have five different rows uh, with styling applied, a background color, a border radius, some padding, all these things are here, but guess what? This one shows only for reseller step four, okay? So there's no one that sees all of this all at the same time. This all is revealed to them as they are moved from one circle to another, removed from the previous circle, added to the next one, removed from that one, added to the next one, via 
automations and via action templates which we manually trigger okay so this is really really simple and now let's go to the notices let's go to pop-up notices and take a look there okay and this is just a normal new feature announcement but now look at our pop-up notices I have back to dashboard I have reseller 4 reseller 2 reseller 3 and guess what these are the same way they are organized by circle affiliation which means they show only to people in a specific circle no one will see all of them at the same time they'll only see one at a time as it correlates to their current circle okay so we organize these in the same way and that's how we present this presentation to someone in this configuration circle step two I believe this is and so they see this row with this current step one is complete step two is next they see this row that tells them they're under evaluation they see this pop-up notice and they're seeing this menu configuration all based on their circle all right so we've come a long way so now let's see if we can get Calvin through the reseller program onboarding what happens next how does Calvin get from step one to step two let's take a look all right here we are back on the admin side I've filtered the contacts list by Calvin's name just to protect the privacy of all of our other reseller prospects this one of course is fake and so now we're going to assume that the staff has looked at Calvin's uploaded information and submission and uh, ID card and all those things and everything matches our requirements and now we're ready to move him okay so now we can go to actions template and we're just gonna choose ready to sign reseller ready to sign this has been pre-created it consists of actions such as send email to assigned users that means an email will go to Calvin add to circle remove from circle this is where we'll change the circle which will then change the appearance of the dashboard and we're going to generate a document and this is actually the reseller agreement being generated so we're taking Calvin's information and we're taking a document template which is the reseller agreement and we're merging them and we're doing that automatically here in this action so I've chosen the correct action it's pre-programmed and now I'm just gonna click trigger and now all four of those things are being done immediately instantly and now we're all good let's go to Calvin's dashboard and see what happened on his side okay let's refresh and just as we expect here we go oh step two now Calvin instead of seeing waiting on action he sees a button he sees a new notice that explains exactly what's needing to happen and now he has a new menu item he also sees a notification that's come in about his document that's been assigned to him okay and let's look at the email that Calvin received okay so here's Calvin's email if I zoom in here you'll see it says okay Calvin your reseller application has passed the evaluation step and your next step is to sign and then click here to be taken to your dashboard notice here that I'm using the placeholder link that redirects to your start page again this is really useful because I can use this in a lot of applications and it will dynamically find the user's start page when they log in it will understand okay this person's logged in now what is their start page okay thank you and redirect there all in one go okay so Calvin gets notified automatically when that manual action takes place and he can click here and make his way back into the portal and here we are back on this dashboard same place that Calvin would see and we've already looked around here so his next action is to sign the reseller agreement which we'll do in a second but first let me take a minute and talk about this menu so you see reseller onboarding and you see legal and if you'll remember that in the step before this legal wasn't there it was just reseller onboarding so let's look on the admin side and understand how we achieve that okay so I'm here in custom menus and you get here by using the flyout menu and you go to custom menus okay so you'll see here the reseller onboarding if I go to edit here the way this is achieved is just a direct link to a specific portal page which is reseller onboarding and I've titled it reseller onboarding you can title this you can change the title and call it dashboard you can change the title and call it anything you want choose your uh, icon and you'll notice that I've hidden this from the dynamic pages menu if you don't know what that means 
Just look up these three words in the documentation and it'll help you. Okay. So that part explains the reseller onboarding. And then the other legal, all I've done here is just renamed the office item and named it legal because we don't really have any invoices or anything like that for these users to complete. So legal is a better fit. And now if you'll look in the visibility, there's a little more explanation here. And notice that instead of showing it to all clients and prospects, I'm actually just showing it to specific circles, okay? And these are the steps that I want this particular menu item to show for. Not step two, remember, I'm not seeing that step two because we don't need it then because that's the step before they sign the document. Uh, step three is when the document is ready for signing. So again, we're using these circles as steps and therefore this menu item will only be available to the users in step four, step five, and step three. All right, so now we're back on the client side and here's Calvin, he's logged in, he's completed step two and he's about to start step three. So let's take a look here and you see that there's a button that says sign the reseller agreement and here's the notice. We've already looked at the notices, how those are created. Let's look at this button really quick so you can understand the no code option that is in use here. All right, so this is the admin side of that dashboard that we just looked at. And if you'll scroll down, you'll see the row that's associated with the step that Calvin is currently on. And if you'll go to this button block and open it, see here, the click action is set to navigate to documents awaiting my signature. And that just does exactly what it says. So let's go back there and watch it in action. Okay, we're back on the client side and, and Calvin is ready to continue with signing the reseller agreement. He clicks the button that we just looked at the coding for. That takes him to a list of documents pre-filtered for the ones that are awaiting my signature. And it's important to point out that if you are using that button, it's nice if you have, say, three or four documents awaiting signature. It doesn't go directly to one single document. It goes here to the list of documents that show all the documents awaiting signature so that all of them will be visible when clicking that button. In this case, it's only one. I will go ahead and click here. Okay, and so here's the reseller agreement as it is right now. Let's go ahead and close this. And we'll just do a quick signature. Uh, if we go down and sign here at the bottom, click and we'll say Calvin. Next, yes, this is fine. That's gonna add the signature. It's going to fill in the signing date. It's going to stamp everything, give a audit trail with IP addresses and all those things. The signature has been added, so now we're all good. So here, now it tells me I'm on step four, awaiting activation. You have successfully signed. And then here, back to dashboard, continue the next step. This is just another notice that's coded to be on this step in particular. It's an easy way to help them understand, okay, now back to your dashboard will now be completed with step three. And now step four is the only step left. We are awaiting activation. I'm informed here what is actually happening. So now we're all good. Still the legal is still shown in case Calvin wants to go and review his document that he's just signed. We're gonna leave that in place. This will always lead him back here. And every time he logs in, because this is his start page, he will end up back here. So now Calvin is awaiting a manual activation, which is on our side, on the Sweet Dash staff side. We are notified when this signing takes place. We then have a queue where we take each candidate and we make sure they meet the requirements, make sure that we have the right account in which to enable their reseller dashboard. And then we manually enable the reseller dashboard in that account. And then the next step here is to use an action template to complete the final actions that will move Calvin into the final step and complete his onboarding as an official reseller. Let's move to the admin side and take a look at that. Okay, before we trigger that last action template and move Calvin into the final step, let's look again at this dashboard, at this portal page that's acting as the dashboard for this onboarding. So we've moved them through these rows, essentially, right? By changing circles, we've shown them this row, we changed their circle, then we showed them this row only. And now we're going to change the circle again and show them this row so with the step four completed. We've moved them through these rows. 
We moved them past this one with the signing. Awaiting activation is where Calvin is now. And now we're going to move him to visibility of this row only. And this is one strategy to make a dynamic dashboard that changes as you are moving someone through a process. Okay, so that's clear. Okay, so now we are back in the CRM. We're looking at Calvin. We're going to trigger the action template just like we did before. Except for this time, we're not going to choose ready to sign. We're going to choose fully activated. And you see we're changing the circle. We're removing him from one circle, adding him to another circle, therefore changing the step that he's on in our construction and we're adding to an additional audience and this is the official resellers audience let's trigger all this happens in one go done so now let's go back to Calvin on the client side and refresh okay let's refresh here and now Calvin is fully approved and activated he'll receive an email notification and if we wanted to, and we plan to, to use this dashboard for educational resources, for announcements, for continued communication with our resellers, and you could use the same process too to onboard and continue the steps as needed until you complete, and then maybe change circles one more time to get to another dashboard that you plan to use for long-term maintenance and communication with that group of people. But this is a perfect example of how you can configure an entire onboarding process and show information throughout the process and deliver a top quality experience to your prospects in whatever capacity they are to you. To us, they're aspiring reseller partners and this is the process that we use powered completely by SweetDash. And I think it's important to point out that this is a super flexible construction. We needed these steps to go in a very particular way we had manual stops that needed to be in particular places. And this is completely unique for us. But SweetDash can do that. SweetDash is constructed and designed to have the toolkit to allow for that. And same thing with your business. As you're building out and designing your processes, you can use the tools to adapt specifically to your business use case and build workflows that are perfect for those use cases. And this is a perfect example of that flexibility. Okay, so that's a complete picture. We're gonna wrap it up. Hopefully you'll find this walkthrough very helpful. And maybe you'll construct something very similar to it. We will work to get a template that works just like this into the template library. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks everyone and have a great rest of your day. Bye. If you had seen me trying to figure things out, my head was spinning, my success was in doubt. But now the search is, the pain is over. One, two, three, four. I'm not searching, not anymore. Everything's in one place And it feels so free